Good morning, and welcome to Daily Disciplines. In our time together, we've been talking about procrastination. And uh, just as a summary of the last few days, here's a statement. Procrastination can be a destructive habit that affects not only my productivity, but also my life. In some extreme cases, it is also classified as a psychological disorder that can disrupt relationships, jobs, and my family life as well. The result of putting things off until later can result in guilt, stress, and even a feeling of low self-esteem because of its psychological effects. That, as a summary, from my perspective, says... There are some pretty serious consequences. And so the fact that 95% of the people are touched by procrastination, according to the experts, leads me to our next question, and that is, why do we procrastinate? Why do I procrastinate? Why do you procrastinate? So we're going to look at that over the next two or three days together to see if we can find some sort of understanding at a level that would be helpful to us day by day by day in overcoming the habit of procrastination. Why we do it? I think if we understand why, we can begin to change the habit patterns. So there is somebody, um, let's say his name was Edward Young, he said, procrastination is the thief of time. Now, very seldom on this podcast have I, have I used a lengthy passage from uh, a book. But today, in this session, I'm going to use a, a passage here that I think summarizes some things that are really important for us. It comes from um, a couple of people by the name of Jane Burka and Lenora Yoon. And then another um, two gentlemen, Albert Ellis and William Knaus. And they've written uh, several books in this area, but a compilation of writings from them puts it this way. The procrastinator is often remarkably optimistic. You say, oh, good, good. That's good, isn't it, Skip? Well, optimism is certainly good, but listen carefully. The procrastinator is often remarkably optimistic about his ability to complete a task on a tight deadline. This is usually accompanied by expressions of reassurance that everything is under control. Therefore, there is no need to start. For example, he may estimate that a paper will only take five days to write. He has 15 days. There is plenty of time. Therefore, there's no need to start now. Lulled by a false sense of security, time passes. At some point, he crosses over an imaginary starting time and suddenly realizes, Oh, no! I am not in control. There isn't enough time. That's kind of the way procrastination grabs us and moves into our lives. At this point, considerable effort is directed towards completing the task and the work progresses. This sudden spurt of energy is the source of the erroneous feeling that I only work well under pressure. Have you ever said that? I only work well under pressure. Did you know that there's a lot of people who believe that about themselves because of what we have just talked about from these authors? And so take a close look at yourself today. Do you have that idea that you can get it done, and then all of a sudden you're panicked, and then you lead yourself to the conclusion because you do ultimately get it done, sometimes by staying up all night to get it done, but you get it done, and then you feel, wow, I only work well under pressure. Well... <laughs> Skip, I, it feels like you're about to say, have a great day. When you do these kinds of things to me, how can I have a great day? Because having a great day is a matter of choosing. We're moving towards some great things. 
So have a great day. We'll talk again soon.